Welcome to class time, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE subjects. It's now time for CSEC Theatre Arts. I am Doreen Reed. Today we will be looking at playmaking and today's objectives are one, to understand the structure of a play, two, develop improvisation skills in order to produce a play, and three, experiment with Caribbean cultural forms and content in creating a play. So let's just get right into our lesson. But we also want to contextualize exactly what it is that we're looking at when we talk about the playmaking. Now remember, CSEC requires of you to create a 10 to 15 minute production or a short play in which you must include a cultural form. And at the end of that, you're expected to also produce a short journal that documents your process. And so as a result of that, within that context, we're going to be looking at playmaking, hence the objectives that we selected. Now, whenever it is that you are creating a play, there are several things that we want to bear in mind when you're creating a play. You have to consider these things. And here they are. The interpretation of your stimulus. The structure of a play. Playmaking techniques. Dramatic devices. Dramatic modes and the use of the Caribbean cultural forms. Now, these things are important consideration because all of these things together allow you to be able to put that play together that you need for it to be of the standard and the quality that is required by the CSEC Theatre Arts syllabus. And so let us look a little bit at the stimulus. When you think about the stimulus, you think about the topic statement, the one that determines what the play should be about. Now remember, in creating this play, you're creating it from scratch, as we call things. It's just like you're cooking and you say that, okay, you know what, I'm creating from scratch. You are now taking things and putting your play together. And so it is always something that starts from a stimulus. A stimulus. So therefore, it can be a statement, it can be an image, it can be a video, it can be an object, it can be a range of things. So let us just look at some examples. Number one, one a dead, no dash it way. I don't call it doppy. Let me live with this disease, I choose to live. Number two, the journey is an uphill task, but one step at a time is the way to go. And three, Marching, running, bending, crouching, feel the rhythm and move your feet. Now that's a lot of action. And so it gives you an idea exactly what you're supposed to do. But I want to bring your attention to something. Let us look at number one versus numbers two and three. What do you notice about the three? Number one is written in quotation marks, you're correct. What does that mean? It simply means it is direct speech. So at some point in your presentation, it simply means that somebody, a character in that play must, must, and notice I'm placing emphasis on the term must, they must say that line in their production. The other two are statements. So yes, they are driving your general production. Yes, but you have to pay keen attention. We're not going to spend a lot of time on stimulus this morning because guess what? You would have looked at stimulus when you were doing your improvisation. And remember, improvisation would have come before playmaking, so you would have been introduced to it. And so as a result of that, we are just doing this for reinforcement because reinforcement is important. And that's how sometimes we help to remember some of the things that we're doing. All right. So let us now move on to play structure because this is one of the things that we did indicate that you need to bear in mind whenever it is that you are creating a play. Now, whenever you're creating the play, you have to place emphasis on the text. And when you're placing emphasis on the text, you are looking at the plot. You want to look at the theme and you want to look at the characters whenever you're creating your play because this is important. Now, when you're looking at the plot, you're thinking about the order in which the various events in the, in, in the play will unfold. And so therefore you look at the general structure. You want to look at the exposition, the conflict, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, the resolution. All of these things are very important. Now the theme, you think about that recurring thread that is within your presentation. And for the characters, you want to think about those fictional persons that have been created to ensure that your story comes alive. Because yes, you can always have these ideas, but when you have these ideas, what is going to happen to them? You need characters to bring them to life, to make them a little bit more meaningful. And so that is why it is important that we pay keen attention to how our characters are developed. And so guess what? We are going to be looking a little bit at the various structure within the play. 
So what exactly is exposition? It is a part of a story that gives the information to your audience about the setting, the events, and the background stories before introducing the main character. So for example, if the play is set in rural Jamaica and it is on top of a hill, the play is supposed to give you that information in the exposition. So the moment the story starts, we recognize that this play is set in this particular area. It's on a hill, it's in the rural Jamaica. This is what is surrounding the various spaces because we are able to see that and we also get that based on the conversations that are happening. So in other words, you're effectively establishing the situation so that your audience can get a chance to follow. The conflict. Now the conflict, when we speak about the conflict, we want to talk about that disagreement with the opposing forces within the play. Now think about tug of war. We all know that game and a lot of us find it very exciting. So you have persons who are pulling in opposite direction and you find that, okay, here's a conflict because persons want to win, right? And so because people want to win, they're on the opposite sides and persons are trying to pull. Which then brings us to what our next thing is the rising action within this play. Now, the problem would have been established. We realize that there is a conflict. And so during this part is where the suspense is, is being created, tension is being created. Again, let us look at our tug of war game. Now, when both teams are pulling and they are pulling in opposite directions, the way they pull, there's tension because each team wants to pull the other over the line. And there are moments when they are equally strong and because they're equally strong there's a lot of tension in the rope the rope is stiff and this one pulls closer to the edge and then the other one pulls you back this way and it pulls that way and so you're in that mode of going back and forth back and forth back and forth with each other and that's the kind of tension you want to create within your drama when you talk about the rising action because that is what makes it exciting think about sitting on your couch and you're watching a, a play a, a story on, on on tv and boy you're sitting on your edge because something is about to happen you start talking to the characters what that that's the tension in the play that's also building up within you, the person who is watching. And that's what you want for your audience whenever they are watching your play. So you pay keen attention to that. The climax. Now, this becomes a turning point in your story. Some people will call it the high point. It's also the turning point because this is where things are changing with the characters within your, within your play. The falling action. Right here, the tension decreases. So that tension that would have come with the tug of war and the pull and the tightening of the rope, that's no longer happening once the climax, climax happens because what? Everything would have come to a head on, clash. And here it is that the tension is now being diffused. And then you get to the resolution. So whatever that problem was that we established at the beginning, that problem that created the conflict in the first place, we're now at a place where we will solve that problem or solve that problem and move forward. But again, we are not spending forever because one of the things I want to point out to you is that when you're looking at the structure of a play, those of you who would have done English literature, you would also look at structure of a play at, in some form or the other. So this again is for reinforcement. But I also want to point out to you where the disciplines cross. And so if you're a student of English literature and you're also a student of theater arts, what does that mean is that you're able to pull from the various disciplines and bring that experience to each subject. And so no subject most time is done in isolation, especially when it is something that is within the arts and from a literary genre. And so we want to now look at playmaking techniques. And these are very important. I want us to pay attention to these techniques because they give the possibilities for what the dramatic work could look like. What exactly do we mean by this? Now, we spoke about the stimulus earlier. Once you pull on the stimulus and you're given the stimulus, you need to ask yourself, OK, what are the possibilities? Where exactly can I take this stimulus? What can it do for me? What are some of the things that will come out of this? And once you're aware of that, then you're able to create. And that is what the playmaking techniques will allow you to do. It helps you to develop your ideas, decide on what your roles would be, the possible dramatic actions that are there, and what is it that your theme could actually look like. And this is very important, so we have to pay keen attention to it because remember, it is your work, you're creating from scratch. And so we want to see how best we can create these playmaking um, works that the CSEC syllabus requires of us. So let us continue to look at the playmaking techniques. These playmaking techniques are research, brainstorming, improvisation, the scripts, rehearsal, editing, and refining. So let us explore them as we go along. The research, what exactly 
is the research asking us to do? It is basically asking us to collect information about the, the stimulus in whatever shape or, shape or form. So we can look at poems, songs, images, get people's opinion as well, facts. So it's just research in general. So there's no one way in which you can do your research. You can find videos that you can look at that will give you a range of information about the various um, stimulus that, or the stimuli that you would, um, the various stimuli that you would have selected. Brainstorming. Now, having done your research, you need to do something with this information. And one of the things you have to bear in mind while your research can be so rich, remember that the playmaking ask you to work in groups of three to five. So think about five of you or three of you going to do your research and coming back to the table with that bit of information. There are so many things that you can do because you have so much information at your fingertip. And so now together in your group, you're about to do your brainstorming. And once you're brainstorming, you're simply putting your ideas together from your research, jot them down and think about the things, what exactly it is that the research is telling me, what are some of the things that I can use this particular research information to do. So you're putting your ideas to determine possible ideas for your story, the possible characters and the possible actions that you would want to take within your story. And this brings us to what our next technique is. The next technique is improvisation. And the improvisation allows you to um, explore how this story will unfold in the moment. And how are you going to do this? You're going to be doing this by what? Trying different ways to present your scenes. For example, you can present your scene using actions. You can present your scene using dialogues. And you can present your scene using what? Gibberish. And that can make it even more exciting, especially if you're using gibberish, because you will not only enjoy it, but what it does, it allows you to think about how your bodies will move as characters. It allows you to think about what the tone of your voice could look like whenever you're conveying particular things and saying specific things. And so we have to pay keen attention to how it is that we utilize this moment. But not only are we going to be trying different ways to present our scenes, but we can also experiment with different dramatic techniques and dramatic devices. Because remember earlier, we also said these were two of the things that you want to bear in mind whenever it is that you're creating a play. So you think about, okay, whether or not you want to use the flashback technique, a monologue, a tableau. And we understand what a tableau is, right? Because remember, for reinforcement, we are saying a tableau here is a still picture that tells a story. We also understand what the flashback is because you would have done that in previous sessions when you would have also been looking at your various dramatic devices in your literature and you'd also have expo um, experimented with these as well when you are doing your improvisation. And we know that the flashback is what? Going into the past and once we go into the past, we come back to the present with our story. You're also experimenting with different performance styles. Now, this is very crucial because this helps you to determine how it is that your story will definitely unfold. What does that mean? Do you want your pops to talk? That's a form of performance style. So therefore, you might want to create a table. And so if your table is going to be a human figure and not necessarily a physical table, is that the person who is creating the table with their bodies, is it that they are now going to be moving around? Is it that they are going to be talking? What exactly do you want to do? So you experiment with the various styles, and that will give you an idea of some of the things that you really want in your presentation. Also experiment with the various ways in which you order your scenes to ensure that they are creating the kind of meaning that you want it to actually create. And then you move on to your script. Now, having done your improvisation, you have a whole set of information that you can pull on because you would have done dialogue, you would have also done a range of actions. You now need to make sure that you're consistent because if you don't have a script, what you're going to find is that each time you do the presentation, you are going to be doing something differently. And so to avoid that, you're going to go into scripting your work. And your script is basically documenting the key ideas that came out of your improvisation to show the intended direction of the play. And when you script, you're just going to use the elements of a script, the basic ones. And you're basically looking at what? Writing in the scenes, because a part of script you must have seen. Scene one, scene two, scene three. And because it's a short play, you might have two scenes or three basic scenes that you're going to have. Because remember, it's not longer than 15 minutes. And you're going to have your direct dialogue, but you also must have your stage directions. Because your stage directions 
help to tell people exactly what it is that you're expected to do within this particular piece of work. Then once you have your script, you're now in full rehearsal mode, full rehearsal mode. And so once you're in full rehearsal mode, you're blocking your play. Do you know what blockings are, right? Remember, the blockings has to do with the movement that the characters will do on stage, or the actors rather, will do on stage. And so for example, if my intention is to take up this paper and I'm going to be fanning something, what exactly is the line that I'm saying while I'm fanning? So the act of picking up the paper and fanning at something, that would be my blocking. As part of your rehearsal process while you're blocking, you're doing the work and you're trying to find various ways that express your ideas and improve your performance skills. And because you're doing that, you're going to go through the process of adding props. You're going to be adding costumes, you're adding sets, because these things determine how it is that your body moves and how it is that you interact with each other on stage. And you're also going to be establishing the relationship between actor and the audience. So there's a clear line where the fourth line is drawn and you know where your audience is and you know exactly where you are. Once you start your rehearsal, then you will go into editing. Because you'll always be editing because you're constantly working through. Now, these are the changes that you're adding as you rehearse because the process is never set. So you'll agree at something at the beginning, but guess what? Once you start working, you might find that the creative process will allow you to make changes. And so you're going to go for the editing. So you might edit your script itself or you might edit your blockings. Once you have done that, then you're moving into a refining process. The refining process means what? We're adding the final touch. So therefore you want to seek feedback on your work. So ask a peer to come in, ask your teachers to come in and allow them to look at what it is that you would have done. And based on the feedback that you are given, then you'll make adjustments where necessary. And so you want your feedback to be centered around the criteria. So therefore, am I using the cultural form appropriately? Am I adhering to the timeline? Are my characters well developed? Can you follow my storyline? These are some of the things that you want to ask yourself and the kind of information you want to get whenever you're seeking the feedback and you will make your adjustments accordingly. Now I want to point out to you that these playmaking techniques are not set in stone in terms of the order in which you do them. You can do them using any order you want. So for example, you intend to edit something, but guess what? You may have to do some amount of research in order to satisfy your editing. So it simply means you're going to go back to researching after you started your rehearsal process and you're going to come back and do your editing. So they are not set in stone. It's a continuous process while you go through the entire playmaking creation. And so now we're going to move to the cultural form. Now CSEC requires you to do any three cultural form within a given year or a given period. And so you have to work accordingly. And so the three that are currently on the syllabus for you to look at are wakes, landship, and carnival. And so for the purpose of this presentation, we are going to use the cultural form of carnival. Now, what exactly are some of the things that we know about carnival, or we can just say generally about carnival? Carnival by itself is a season and it is not just a day because sometimes people talk about carnival and think it's just a day. No, it's not. It's a general season. It's a composite art form. It utilizes strong masquerade elements. It has various purposes and carnival in Jamaica is also bard culture. And I wanted to point that out because what we're going to find, the strong masquerade element that is present within the carnival cultural form, you will not find that strong masquerade element within Jamaica. But we are doing a Caribbean examination and so it is our duty and it is important that we understand what is happening in the other territories, especially the territories where the cultural form is more embedded and culturally rooted than the one in which we are in. And so we are able to make comparison and for you to better understand and exactly what is going on. So we did say carnival is a composite art form. What exactly do we mean by that? Now, when we think about carnival, you're going to be able to find other cultural forms embedded in it. And that is why we say it's composite because it uses a range of forms. We can find storytelling. We'll find the Jab Jab um, characters coming out. We'll find the steel pan. We'll find the Damlerin. We'll find the bat band. All of these things are cultural forms in and of themselves. And so they all form part of the carnival celebration because we'll find them there in the carnival celebration. Now, the purpose of carnival, it ranges from different things. It could be for celebration, recognition, 
transformation, entertainment. And once we know what the purpose is, then that helps us to determine how it is that we are doing the work that we are supposed to do with the playmaking. The music, dance, drama, all these are also performance modes that you can find within the carnival cultural form. Now, because it is that these are the performance modes that we can find in the cultural form, they are going to be very integral in terms of how we use them to create the play that we want to create. Now, we also want to examine the elements of the cultural form. And some of the basic elements that we can find in the cultural form, we are looking at characters, costumes, dance, drama, music, masks, props. Now, these elements are not just elements of cultural form, but they're also dramatic and theatrical elements. And these have also found themselves in the form. And as a result of that, we want to ask ourselves the question, which of the elements would I best use whenever it is that I'm integrating the cultural form in the playmaking? Because it is important, because this is where the integration comes in. Remember, a major part of the playmaking um, exercise is that you must integrate the cultural form. And you don't just want to mention the term you want to make sure that it becomes the engine that actually drives this play that you are creating and because we're aware of that we want to look at how it is that we go about doing the integration and so earlier when we were looking at the playmaking technique we did talk about the fact that you have to place emphasis on your characters the themes and the plot and so in doing the integration you want to ask yourself these questions for the character how does the cultural form influence the choice of character that I will choose. You also want to ask yourself, how is it that the cultural form will influence the action versus the reaction? How it informs the action? Now, a crucial thing within drama and theatre is about action versus reaction. So I do something, you respond. And so we have to pay keen attention and that is how our plot is actually developed. And then we talk about the themes. How is it that the cultural form will influence the themes and the events? Because it is out of the events that we are actually going to get and see our themes unfolding within our play. And so as a result of this, we are now going to do a little bit of application of all the playmaking techniques and the integration of the cultural form just for us to get a full understanding. And so the stimulus that I have chosen for our application is that the stimulus would be Ardeus Pitney and Rockstone. Now that is taken from a Caribbean proverb, one that we all know a lot of times even at home. I'm sure your parents would have said that to you. Now remember, we said that we are going to be using the cultural form of carnival, and so we are working with that just the same. So we are starting with the first playmaking technique that we mentioned, which is the research. Remember we did say your research could be taken from a range of things. You can take it from books, you speak to people, you get facts, etc. Now, for this particular stimulus, what we are going to be looking at, we are going to be looking at the views of other persons. So I would have asked persons in my research, what exactly do you think this particular stimulus mean? Sheldon responded, if you don't follow instructions, then there will be consequences. Marcia's response was, pick me for listen. Now, that's just general information coming from two individuals that can form a part of your research, yes, and help to determine how you move forward. But you also want to understand and also try to further interpret your stimulus. What exactly does hard ears mean? It means a what? Pick me for listen. What's the meaning of a pitney? It's a Jamaican what term for the, for the word child. Niam rock stone. Now, when you look at it naturally, you can't eat rock stone. So therefore, it must be about some amount of suffering and consequence. And so that is how you try to break it down for full understanding when you're interpreting your stimulus. Now, I've also gone further because I would have done this, this research on the, on, the, on the stimulus itself, but then I also need to do some research on carnival itself. And so a part of carnival is that you also have to pay attention to the music. And so I've selected the song, I Looser Than Lucy. Now a number of you will be familiar with that song and so you can just keep paying attention and, and, and listen to the song and listen to the words and the story coming out of the song. And so in analyzing the song again, you ask yourself, who is referred to as a loose person? Again, you get people's view. Some persons would say, one person said, okay, someone with many partners. Somebody said, no, you refer to the person who is a yamed. 
or a skittle. And now this response is very important because remember within Jamaica there, we have a lot of parlance that we use and also in other parts of the Caribbean. And so this will also help you to determine the language that you use within your playmaking because that forms a crucial part of how you determine and define who your character is. Michelle's response was somebody who is just all over the place. Again, this forms part of your research and it helps you to determine what exactly it is that you want to create. Now that you have done that research, you want to continue with your analysis. And so you ask yourself, the song is talking about somebody's loose or something looser than Lucy. What exactly it is within the song or some of the words that would indicate that this person is a loose person? And so the lines of the song would say, all down on the ground, walking, walking up my body and dragging it all over town. When I drop it out and I wind in on top of the speaker box and I dance in and I don't want to stop, they call me Lucy. Now that is evidence from the song indicating why this particular individual is considered a loose person. The question now is, what can we do with this information? And we're also going to explore that. A part of your research will sometimes lead you to identify the various characters that you can find within the carnival cultural form. And so here you have a range of characters that we can, we can, we can look at. And so here you have the Jab Jab, right? These are the Jab Jab um, characters. Down here you have the baby doll, you have the Dom Loren, and you also have the Midnight Rubber characters. Now these are all forms by themselves and these are the strong, mas strong masquerade elements that the carnival entails. And so you use the things that you know about these various characters to help you to inform what happens to your characters in your play, what happens to the, to the, um, the choice of actions. And so you once you see the job done by looking at them, they're also very much self-explanatory in, in, um, in what they're all about. Now, the Dom Loren, we spoke about the Dom Loren, but we also want to pay keen attention to the baby doll character, which is a satirical portrayal of a baby mother with an illegitimate baby. And so once we know about who this um, baby doll character is, I want to pay my pay, um, attention going forward because that is going to inform some of the various choices that we make going forward. And so we would have done our research and now we need to brainstorm. Because we said that we want to brainstorm and we are putting our ideas together, we are putting our ideas together in order to help us to determine the way forward. And so we said that it can determine choice of characters. And maybe the choice of character would be Lucy because the song spoke about somebody called Lucy. And based on the research information that we would have received from other individuals, these are possible things about Lucy the character. Maybe Lucy could be somebody who goes around to every party it could be somebody who has many partners. It could be somebody who goes around scamming people for their monies just to go to the party. And it could also be somebody who is what? Disobedient as well. But because the stimulus is also saying, here's our pit in your stone, we know that Lucy belongs to somebody, right? And so therefore we want to incorporate a mother, the possibility, and the possibility about that mother is that she's very much frustrated because Lucy is what? Quite a disobedient child. What are some of the dramatic actions that may come out of that? It could be that Lucy, you know, did something and she got caught and she's arrested by the police. Lucy could get into a fight. Maybe Lucy gets pregnant without even knowing who the father of her child is. Remember, these ideas are not cast in stone. They are just possible ideas that could come out based on our information. You have the leverage to create your own um, ideas based on what you would have gotten. And so now you want to go through your improvisation process and you're asking yourself, what are some of the best elements that we are going to use to integrate the cultural form within the playmaking? Now, remember, we're talking about carnival. And in order to make it obvious, when you're thinking carnival, you have to think of what? Music, very good. And you also have to think about what? The costume and choice of movements. These are things that assist you in identifying the cultural form. So if you're incorporating them in your playmaking, then it must be that obvious. And so you ask your question, how does the cultural form influence the Lucy character? It influences the Lucy character because it has a lot of gyration that's taking place in its movement. And this represents that act of fertility. And if you're talking about that act of fertility, then you want to ensure that Lucy is that character that dances a lot. And so you know, think about your choice of movement. So is it that you're going for the corkscrew movement that isolates the upper part of the body, or you're going for the, the 
isolation of the pelvis area itself. So you have to determine who Lucy is and the various levels in creating that movement. So are you keeping it at a medium level with your corkscrew or are you going for a lower level with your corkscrew? So you have to make that determination as you talk about the dancing and the whining because that's who Lucy really is. Lucy is also what could be a single mom based on the baby doll character because remember we did say the baby doll character is that character that, um, that represents the, 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 the illegitimate, illegitimate child. But in, 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 in history, remember that the ships used to dock, the sailors would be here. A lot of the ladies at that time, some of them would get pregnant for these sailors and then the ships would be gone, the sailors would be gone and they would all be left as single mom. And that's how the baby doll character would come in and we can utilize that baby doll character here. Carnival is also about celebration. And so you want to make Lucy a very vibrant person, except when she gets in trouble. But we are also looking at celebration and you want to celebrate a new life. How does the form influence action? Again, we talk about fertility. So we're drawing on the fertility action from the song and we're looking at the, me the meaning of the baby doll's character to inform the actions that are taking place. How does the cultural form influence the various events? Now we're saying maybe Lucy disobeys her parents, goes out and she gets in trouble. So you have to identify a song that can speak to that. Once you identify a song that can speak to that, then you'll incorporate that song within your, within your playmaking. And that will resonate with your audience. It resonates also with the persons and the characters within the play. Maybe Lucy gets in a fight with her friends. No, this is very important because the fight doesn't have to be physical, especially now within a time where we have COVID and we are keeping our social distance. So you don't have to have somebody go and grab somebody by the collar and drape them up. No, we can use dance. So once the dance is happening, you have the characters who are interacting with each other at a distance. But the dance movements that you're going to choose, the choice of song and the choice of movements will now indicate exactly what is happening within that scene. And so you select movement that are very what combative and even the very facial expression and how the bodies move then that becomes combative for us to fully understand that what is happening here is not people dancing and just simply enjoying self but we have a conflict that is happening and people are at loggerheads with each other then the other part of it is that Lucy also gets pregnant and this again can be demonstrated through music and dance. We have been talking about the baby doll character. Now if you look at the image, you notice how the young lady is carrying the, 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 the baby doll, the doll in hand like a baby. Now you can have a mythical character in your presentation who moves in a similar manner. And so because we said that Lucy is a character that is always dancing, here you have this mythical character coming in and dancing with this baby dancing with this baby and so this character can now dance around Lucy, dance with Lucy and at some point in time hands over the, the, the doll symbolically to Lucy. Once that happens what you have is a symbolic hand over an exchange of the baby which would indicate that okay this baby now belongs to Lucy and so that's one of the ways that we can use it to demonstrate that Lucy is about to um, become a mom. Now the staging of the play we did talk about using tableau, thought tracking, soliloquy, asides, and a range of different things. Now, these are the different devices and dramatic techniques that we can use. We spoke about symbolism just now because once the baby doll character hands over to Lucy, what we would have done right there and then, we would have just done what? Use symbolism. We can use tableau, we can use soliloquy, and we can use asides. We can use all of these things to help to stage your play because you want your play not to look flat, but you want it to, be, to look really dynamic. And you want your, your, the way your speech is, is coming across is that it's coming across in a meaningful way and to keep people very much interested in whatever it is that you're doing. And so these are just some of the basic ways. If we were to continue, we'd go with the script, but right now we are not going to be writing the script. We'll now create the script out of this improvisation. Having created the script out of the improvisation, we'll continue our rehearsal process, and at some point in time, we'll go into refining. Right at home, you can sit at home and do your own creation of these things. Using the same way where we selected a stimulus, you can select your stimulus and start creating your own play. Grab your partners, your teachers will place you in groups, and you can simply sit, meet on Zoom, and start working out what exactly this is supposed to look like. And so we just want to do a quick recap. What are some of the things that we did say we want to keep in mind when creating a play? The interpretation of the stimulus. 
We want to understand the structure of a play. We want to be able to utilize the playmaking techniques. We want to pay attention to the dramatic devices, the dramatic modes, and how it is that we utilize our cultural forms. We also said that we need to understand the structure of a play. And when we think about understanding the structure of the play, we want to focus on the plot, the theme, and the character, because it is important that we pay keen attention in that regard. But we also want to remember that we must utilize our playmaking techniques. And the playmaking techniques that we want to utilize, researching, we are brainstorming, we are doing improvisation, we are scripting, we are editing, and we are refining. Once you're able to utilize all of these things and utilize them effectively, then you're able to create the play that you're supposed to create. And in integrating the cultural form, we want to focus on some things. We want to focus on what, how the form influences the choice of characters, how the form influences the action, and how it is that the form influences the events. All right? So that's all the time we have for CSEC Theatre Arts.